thanks to everybody who's come here today to Yahoo Fantasy. It's more than just a game. My name is Brian Fischler, and uh, while I don't work for Yahoo, I uh, did happen to stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. And uh, today you're going to be hearing from a couple of us. You're going to be hearing from Joe, who's a product manager at Yahoo. And you'll also be hearing from uh, Nick D'Ambrosio and myself, two of the members of the All Blind Fantasy Football League. So who am I? You know, it's funny. I've got to ask myself that question every morning because when I wake up, some days I'm a web accessibility risk management specialist. Other days I'm an assistive technology teacher. And still other days I am a comedian and also the host of a podcast called That Real Blind Tech Show. So I wear different hats every day. And um, my story is like a lot of your stories out there. You know, I started to uh, lose my vision many, many years ago, but I went totally blind about 12 years ago. And before I went tw- totally blind, I was a huge sports fan. I played baseball, football, and soccer. I loved watching my Yankees and Florida Gators on television. And then in the late 90s, I got into something known uh, to most of you now called fantasy football. And it was funny because in the late 90s in fantasy football, we did everything by pen and paper and flash forward 20 some odd years. And when friends come over now and they ask me if they could borrow a pen, I said, what are you talking about? You know, as a blind guy, I actually have no pens in my apartment. But as we got into the 2000s and Y2K let us down and computers continued to work, we moved from playing fantasy sports from pen and paper online. And, you know, you had several companies that got into the fantasy sports landscape. Um, There was one company out there that uh, goes by four letters that most of you know. And I actually know them by four different letters because they've never made their app and their website fully accessible to people with disabilities, you know, which is quite frustrating. So as I got into playing fantasy, I had to discover a site that had some accessibility to it. And I came across Yahoo Fantasy. And in the beginning days of them doing fantasy around 2012, 2014, their app was somewhat accessible. And then I came across an app called Big Noggins. And I'm sorry to say it was not a porn site. It was actually a small third party app that allowed people to draft their Yahoo Fantasy teams through the Big Noggins application. And it was just dumb luck that it was a small developer that I was able to get in touch with. And he was able to tweak accessibility features. And this was the first time that I was ever able to draft my teams with my sighted counterparts. So it was pretty cool. You know, I did it for about two years through the Big Noggins application, only to find out that Yahoo discovered the Big Noggins technology and they had acquired it. And what they planned to do was build the Yahoo Fantasy app from the ground up and implement Big Noggins technology into the app. And I was very excited because I knew people at Yahoo Accessibility. As I mentioned, this was about the year 2014. Things were mostly accessible. And I remember the day that everything was released because we got all set to do our fantasy baseball draft. And I went to draft my team only to find out that the app was not accessible, which was quite stunning because of Yahoo's commitment to accessibility and depression sank in. And that's when I believe my Robert Hayes drinking problem happened. And I decided, what was I going to do next? Well, I sat back and instead of getting angry, I sat down and composed a lengthy email to my contact at Yahoo And I expressed my disappointment and regret. I said, you know, I was always under the belief that Yahoo was so committed to accessibility. And I got an email back pretty quickly from this contact at Yahoo. And unlike the emails that a lot of us get when we contact companies about accessibility, it didn't say that standard line of we're aware of the issue. We plan to fix it, but we can't comment on when or where we're going to have a fix for it. This was an email that was extremely apologetic and talked about this was a big miss on their part, you know, and their rush to get the app to the general public and the millions of people that play fantasy sports, accessibility kind of got brushed aside. And that's not who Yahoo is or plans to be in the future. 
And within a few months, you know, I went back and forth with Yahoo. We tested a few things and we got the app almost fully accessible to people with disabilities. And this was a good movement forward. And we're going to be getting into kind of where Yahoo Fantasy is today for people with disabilities, because like I said, this was what, seven, eight years ago. I'm not great with the math. 2014, when the app wasn't fully accessible and here where we sit in 2022, the app is, from what I could tell, the only 100% fully accessible app in the sports landscape to people with disabilities. Sure, you have other apps out there that have worked on their accessibility, but they're not just there yet. And then you have companies like that four-letter one that just could care less about fixing their accessibility. So sit back, relax, enjoy what the rest of uh, my colleagues have to say. And Nick D'Ambrosio, why don't you tell the listeners uh, – how you got into fantasy. Thanks, Brian. Um, I've been playing fantasy football since I was 12 years old, 1980. I'm dating myself. Uh, to begin, I thought this was a AA meeting for people with fantasy football addictions, but it's for accessibility. And this is the right place for me because my story goes back, like I said, when I was 12 years old, I was diagnosed with RP at five. And uh, I had fairly lots of troubles in class reading the chalkboard and so forth and dealing with my slight disability at the time but I managed to get through high school get through college but there was one thing that eluded me was playing organized sports Um, I love sports so much I wanted to be on the football team I wanted to be on the basketball team the hockey team and I tried out for all of them and failed miserably because of my lack of vision Um, So I needed, I had a void in my life and this void became fantasy sports. And uh, as a child, um, I would do all of the fantasy work. Like Brian had said, it was all pen and paper. So we had to, you know, get the newspaper, jot down all the information, write everything down for everybody, put the standings up. And I was the statistician. They called me Nikki Pools. I was the main guy. And it was fun. I was back, I was connected back to my friends And uh, I was enjoying sports even more because I was so involved. But with RP, uh, like anything, you start to lose your vision. And um, when I turned 45 around that area, I had basically went totally blind. I have some light perception, but I was unable to function on a computer when things started to move on to the computer. And I gave up. Uh, I got into a slight depression. And I just didn't want to play fantasy because I knew what it took to be successful. And we all want to win. We all are competitive in, in certain aspects. And I was very competitive and I wanted to win. And without having that information in my hands um, where I can see it and, and manipulate it and work with it, I just didn't want to play anymore. Uh, and my vision got worse and I needed to get out of my doldrum. And so I started to get into blind organizations and started, and I picked up an iPhone for the first time. It opened up my world because at that point I knew um, I had a chance to get back a lot of the independence that I had lost. And so I started to really get into blind stuff, getting, listening to blind podcasts, listening to anything to help me become a better person. And I came across Brian's podcast one day, and it was IX's VO. That's what he had called it before, and now it's that real blind tech show. And he said, anybody wants to play fantasy football, shoot me an email. And I was like, that's impossible. Because as a newly blind person, I had seen the, the problems we all had with accessibility. If it came through a website, through an app, through a product, It was tough. And I knew fantasy was going to be a difficult task because of the many moving parts and playing fantasy football. But lo and behold, it was all accessible. And uh, it was it was fantastic. I thank Yahoo so much because it brought me back to a point of my childhood that I had missed and uh, and something that I love to do. Uh, in closing, I would like to tell everybody that Brian did a, a fabulous job in getting this ball rolling by putting out those emails, like he has said. But I think as a group of blind and visually impaired people, we must get together. Uh, there is strength in numbers. And the fact that we had this league of 12 blind people playing, some, playing, playing fantasy was almost 
you know, if you, you the, the reactions of people who saw the video that we'll play later on is like, you guys play fantasy? He's like, yeah, of course we play fantasy. And the fact that we as a group can get awareness out there by collaborating together as a group of blind and visually impaired people for a common goal, whether it be a website, whether it be an app, whether it be a product, I think we all have to work together to make these companies understand that we are here and we are here to stay. So that's what I, uh, uh, I'd like to thank Yahoo and uh, for what they've done. And it's uh, really been a pleasure playing fantasy with in this league. And I'm going to leave it back to you, Brian. Thanks again. Thanks, Nick. That was very well put. And like, I, I love that strength in numbers and, and just reaching out to developers. And, you know, we're so thankful to have Joe Nazaro here, uh, product manager at Yahoo. So take it away, Joe. Thanks, Nick and Brian. Yeah, it's really a pleasure to be here today. And I just, I love hearing those stories. It makes me super proud to do the work that I do. So I wanted to give a little background on how I got to be in the place that I am, because I don't think people know exactly, you know, how do you become a product manager at Yahoo Sports or Yahoo Fantasy? So I grew up in a small town in, in Massachusetts, uh, loving sports, playing as many sports as I could. Um, that journey took me to college to play basketball and soccer, um, but then I graduated and I had no idea what I wanted to do, like a lot of people, I presume. So I was lucky enough to follow my college soccer coach um, to a new school in Vermont, tried my hand at coaching soccer. It didn't really work out, um, was able to then go to a WNBA basketball team and do an internship for media relations, found the job interesting, but there was no full time position at the end. So decided to go back to school, get out of the East Coast winter weather that seemed to get longer and longer and landed in San Francisco. So I did a graduate school program at University of San Francisco that was focused on getting internships. And I really liked this program because I needed to work. So I needed to make money to live. And then it was also it was at night and it gave you real world opportunity and connections to find out what opportunities there are in the sports world, which I think is a really hard thing to navigate. So I was very lucky um, in that I picked up the local you know, free newspaper on the street one day. I took a look at it and recognized the person on the cover, um, one of the co-CEOs of a company that was building fantasy sports on Facebook and um, approached him at the restaurant that I was working at at the end of my shift one night and said, hey, I'm a grad school student. Um, I read about your company in the, in the paper and I wanted to know if you had any open positions. I really need internship work for my grad school program. He said, yep, come on down. You know, we're looking for new people. So I went and met some folks, um, had a connection and was able to basically work there um, for free for a while, ended up getting a, paid a little bit of money towards the end of my time there. Um, and I, but a no there was no point, uh, a full-time position didn't seem likely at the time, but as I was graduating, they were acquired by Yahoo at the time. So when that happened, a new window opened for me. I was able to transition a contractor role into a full-time position. Now I've been at Yahoo for about 11 and a half years. Um, one of the reasons that I love working at Yahoo is um, the people. Um, the people care. That's one of the things that I really like about it. We care about you know, being happy at work. We care about the people that use our products. So it's really nice to hear from Nick, Brian, and really all of our users in one way or another, if something's not working correctly, we want to know. Um, if something is working well and you like it, those stories are also nice, but we really do want to make sure that, you know, the stuff we put our time and energy into um, is being used in the way that we hope that it is. Um, so I've been on the, the product management team, I think for about that same time as Brian, I'll get into it in a minute in my slides, but um, I've been on the product team for about seven years, always working on, on fantasy and um, yeah, I feel lucky to be in the position I am. So I wanted to share a bit of my story with everyone just to, just to hear how I got into this role. And um, yeah, hopefully you took something from it. So I did prepare a few slides um, to share a little bit about Yahoo and who we are and um, what we believe in and, and kind of my role and, and our, our role with accessibility. And so really we're about um, you know, passion, really connecting fans to their teams and experiences. So, you know, what's the best thing about working in sports is that people really care about it and there's a lot of passion. So we do get a lot of good feedback about our products. Um, 
these are the, the pillars that we have for our, our products is we're really focused on fantasy. Um, a new space that's opened up in the last couple of years is betting, which we care about. We're trying to figure out our path in that industry. And then community. I think that's the most special piece of this all. As Brian and Nick have, have found a way together, we have lots of other people who have found connections and build friendships that, that can last a long time. So that's something that we're really proud of is, is kind of the social nature of, of fantasy sports and how we can bring people together and have fun, basically. And so our team, things that we focus on as a group is we really care about diversity. We try really hard to bring a diverse group of individuals to talk about our products and how do we make them work for everybody. Um, collaboration, we really love a team effort. I mean, you think about sports, there's individual sports definitely, but you still will have a team working with you, you know, practicing and coaching and parents. So at some level, there's always gonna be team aspects to it. And at Yahoo, we definitely try to build a big team atmosphere. And then we want to be competitive, like, like Brian and Nick will, will probably talk about, you always want to win. And so winning can take on so many different forms, but something that we put a lot of time and effort in, um, we try to be the best at it. So that's a bit about Yahoo and Yahoo Sports and what we stand for. Um, so my relationship with accessibility, I think, Brian, I, I got brought in around that time that you had mentioned, because the, one of my first projects when I joined the product team as, as the mobile apps manager was um, we, did an, we did an audit of accessibility. So I think maybe we had received some of that feedback and said, okay, let's dissect this whole app and figure out what's working and what's not working. And iOS actually was doing okay. iOS had some things to fix. There were definitely some stuff there, but Android had this big laundry list of things that we wanted to fix. So that was my first, one of my first projects on the fantasy mobile product team was figuring out, okay, how do we make this product accessible for people to be able to use in all aspects? Because our apps have a lot of games in them and even you know, a lot of pieces to the game, whether you're drafting or you're a commissioner. So making sure that every part of every page is accessible to as many people as possible. Um, so we developed this really great partnership. Um, this woman, Kasaya, has been um, you know, a great, great partner at Yahoo. I would go into the lab and bring as many, this is our accessibility lab on the screen as well, really great um, place at, at Yahoo. And you could go in there and watch her draft a team, manage her team. And if people hadn't seen the accessibility um, tools being used before or see how people read their product, uh, use our products, it was really eye-opening. And it really touched people and really made them want to fix these things. So when you send them a ticket, they know who they're fixing them for or how they're making changes to make the products better. So that, that, that was really something great that Yahoo had put an emphasis on and Kasai was really a big proponent of, of getting the products more accessible. So I really owe a lot to her. She showed a lot of things to me and it really is eye-opening to see people use your products. And I mean, the speed at which the, the, the voiceover works is probably the most mind-blowing thing to me. I don't know how you're able to, to follow it like that. It's very impressive. Um, so we did a focus group as part of the All Blind Fantasy League. There was um, part of it was getting feedback and, and hearing lots of different things. So these are just a couple of my favorite quotes. And these are things that like I've shared with all of my team at Yahoo um, makes us really proud of the work that we do and feel really good because it's one of those things where, you know, sometimes you may think, what am I doing with my life? Is this really, is this job really affecting people? It's, it's hard working on, you know, working on a product that you're not able to see people every day. I used to work when I was in grad school, I was, you know, a bartender and I was a server and you knew at the end of your shift, you help this many people get fed or have a good time. You left with a certain amount of money. You can touch all those things. So I've always struggled a little bit. My parents were both teachers with trying to understand like, how am I making people's days better? And it's stuff like this that really makes me proud of the work that I do and that feel good about the path that I've taken. Um, so yeah, that was uh, a few things I put together about myself and, and Yahoo, and I'm going to send it back to, to Brian and Nick to talk about the league. Thanks, Joe. That was fantastic. And it's, it's just very fascinating to kind of see how our worlds really have been connected for many years and we just came to know each other personally here in the last few months as we were preparing for this conference. So it's kind of ironic because I love fantasy sports, yet I hate reality TV. And I'll be the first person to say that fantasy sports, it's the world's greatest waste of time. 
But wow, is it fun. And, you know, you don't even have to be a diehard sports fan because we had people that are in the all blind fantasy league that they didn't they had never played fantasy before. They didn't know if they were huge football fans, but it's the competition that it brings out in each of us and the camaraderie and just the fun of, you know, you get upset when you lose. <laughs> Some people, my colleague Ed Plumacher, you know, he says it ruins my weekend sometime. And, you know, this all started with just getting in touch with Yahoo, putting a voice behind the blindness community. And I always advise people, if there's something that's not accessible out there that you want to partake in, you know, start off, be nice, start off reaching out to those companies with an email or tweeting them. You'd be amazed. Companies are dying for feedback. The developers want to hear how people with disabilities use their product. And not always, but most of the time, you're going to get a positive response and you'd be surprised. This all started eight, 10 years ago with me kind of emailing the company. And then Yahoo had a customer appreciation day where when they were with Verizon uh, Media, I got brought in and I got in front of the CEO just by dumb luck. And he was fielding questions and I hit him up with, well, what are your future plans for your apps and website uh, regarding accessibility. And I got to sit down with some of the key team members. And that's when I guess Yahoo fantasy first learned about the all blind fantasy football league. And that led into about two years ago at the uh, start, I guess, or during the pandemic, uh, Kasaya joined our league and got involved with this case study where Every week we were providing feedback about how the accessibility was of the app, any hurdles we were running into, our favorite features. The app is so, it's got so many amazing features. They wanted feedback from all of us, Nick. What were some of your favorite things, Nick, about doing that case study? I think it was a factor of being right there, hands-on right away, because, you know, uh, learning about blindness and we're learning about the fact that a lot of things weren't uh, accessible to me and I, and it was it was the first time that I was actually in a a process where I can actually make a difference and and there's an added saying it's like uh, a lot of the people you don't realize all this accessibility until you become uh, disabled uh, you know like like Joe was saying like a lot of this stuff you don't realize but you know in someone's life we don't know but you can, you know, may end up losing your vision, losing your hearing or whatever disability that you might have. And you won't realize that this stuff will help generations of people uh, ahead of us. And that was, for me, the exciting part is that, you know, eventually this is going to help little Tommy across the street uh, who wants to play fantasy. And so for me, that put always put a smile on my face and it brought me back again to my childhood and I was thinking of little Nick, little Nikki playing fantasy. And if let's say I couldn't have seen uh, at that age, I would have never played fantasy sports. So having that opportunity was fabulous to, to contribute. And I've got to give a major shout out to Larry Goldberg, who, who really championed all this. A lot of you know the name. He's been in our industry for many, many years. And uh, Larry was a big proponent of, of getting this documentary we're going to show in a few minutes uh moving forward and everything and i was fortunate enough to be uh along with being in the documentary i was the coordinating producer so i guess that means if it wins an academy award i'll get to get up on stage and accept it for mini documentaries not sure that's a cat uh, category at the academy awards but the cool thing about putting this documentary together was nick and i had known each other you know, here's this league that all started through my podcast, That Real Blind Tech Show. But outside of Nick and Ed and myself, I had never really met any of the other members of the league. And we all had two things in common. We were blind and we happened to like playing fantasy football. And I got to call around to everyone and get them uh, on board and it was just so crazy calling around, getting to know everybody's story because it had some differences and everybody had the same thing, though. They loved football and they, um, you know, they wanted to be involved in everything. And Nick, when I first called you asking, uh, you know, 
What are your thoughts about getting together in person to draft the all blind fantasy football league this year? I thought no way in hell, Brian, uh, <laughs> there was a pandemic going and, uh, to get 10 or 12 blind people in one location in a pandemic. And also for me personally, I'm from Montreal, Quebec. And so to pass through the border, I was like, I don't think this is going to happen. Uh, but lo and behold, we got it done. Uh, thanks to Yao and thanks to you, Brian. It all got it all worked out smoothly without a hitch. And it was a wonderful time. And uh, it was an experience I'll never forget. Yeah, it was pretty wild. So I guess you yeah. know, instead of talking about the documentary, why don't we cue it up for everybody? This film features individuals who are blind or visually impaired in a kitchen in a Yahoo Fantasy Football League draft. The group of 10 men and women sit around a table, listening to their laptops and smartphones with earbuds. A title appears. Yahoo presents the All Blind League. Fantasy League players Brian, David, and Nick's names appear. Playing fantasy sports is my way to connect to the games that I grew up loving. Austin Eckler, undisclosed, is not practicing Wednesday. You know, I still love sports and still follow sports. You can't take that out. I just, I just love it too much. We're headed into our sixth season here of the All Blind Fantasy Football League. The fact that this league exists that allow us to all do it together, it just gives us a great feeling. It's, you know, everybody always underestimates blind folks. Oh, they can't do that because they're blind. They can't do this because they're blind. Guys, we got 30 seconds till the draft. I hope everybody's done their homework because I'm looking forward to kicking all of your asses this year. <laughs> I do have a nemesis, Nick D'Ambrosio. I'll just call him Owen 4, Brian. Everybody should want to take down Nick. And I don't know what's more insulting, that I have lost four times to Nick or the fact that he's Canadian beating me in an American game. If you keep trash talking me, I don't hear nothing because I got both my championship rings in my ears. So I'm, I'm kind of like Teflon. I've been playing fantasy for about 30 plus years now. Nikki Pools, that was my nickname. I was Nikki Pools. I used to do the hockey pool, the football pool. And my vision started to go. I couldn't see the screen anymore. Uh, and I, I just I just stopped. My friends like, Nick, what's going on? I was like, what happened to Nikki Pools? He's, he's dead. You know, I'm not playing anymore. I'm, I'm done. A couple of people in the blind community told me, you know, why don't you get an, you know, a phone? And I'm like, a phone? How am I going to do anything? There's no buttons on it. You know, well, there's a screen reader on it. You can figure it out. QB, Cleveland. Matthew Stafford, QB. Matt, fearless forecast, 282 passes. Hey, this could happen, dude. Like, all the information's there on Yahoo. It's totally accessible. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, I got all the power back in my hands? Everybody, welcome to the All Blind Fantasy Football League. After playing in this league for five years and finally having all these people here today, I think it's it's amazing. Am I nervous? Yeah, sure, I'm a little bit nervous. Can it throw me off my game? Maybe. It's a group of people that is really comfortable around each other. You know what? Scrooge name, give me that voice. Frick and frack. Frick and frack. How about that? <laughs> Can you say that in French? <laughs> Look, my goal is to be one person this year, okay? One person! It's just for fun. It's about bragging rights. I got yeah, yeah. something in my pocket that's kind of piercing me. Oh, wait, I think it's the ring. I'll put it on the table. <laughs> we hate when we're drafting right near each other. Say he's seventh and I'm eighth or vice versa because we have a similar mindset in the players we like. Give me Terry McLaurin. Damn it, you, Brian, every freaking pick is impossible. <laughs> my Washington boy, I need my guys. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm not going to tell you a lie. I'm always a straight shooter. It's not the same, you know, that I miss it. I still miss watching games. There's no doubt about it, but I'm back and uh, I'm dominating. Hi, my name is Nick D'Ambrosio and I'm the manager of the Montreal Beavers. My name is Brian Fischler. 
My team name is the Astoria Knights. FC Tunguska. The Cincinnati, Cincinnati Sensations. Sensations. I'm Janine Stanley, and my team name is the Buckeye Hairless Nuts. I, like I said, at the end of the day, it's all about having fun and uh, beating Nick. Kiss the ring, Brian. <laughs> He's gonna kill me outside. <laughs> So, uh, Nick, I don't believe in <laughs> violence, but uh, I got to tell you, what, what's the best revenge? Because who's the champion now? Oh, my goodness. Brian, you are the champion. Yes, he finally won, boys and girls. He did it. <laughs> well, actually, he did it for a second time. So, congrats, Brian. You got the. You didn't beat me in the championship game, but you did win. So, good, good on you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and, you know, the funniest thing is the one, one guy not featured the documentary – was my guide dog, Wesley, because he got kicked off the set because he wouldn't sit still while they were filming and everything. And uh, but uh, what were your thoughts? You know, I've been on plenty of uh, film crews and sets, but I believe it was your first time being on a set. What was your thoughts about the whole production of the documentary? Oh, it was fabulous, Brian. I'd never been on a set before, and it was uh, a whirlwind. You know, we walk in, get, you know, do you need anything, Nick? We'll get you a coffee. Uh, you know, basically there was makeup, wardrobe. I felt like a Hollywood star for a day. And the production and the people there as well were all versed in how to, you know, how to handle a blind person, you know, with the elbow guiding us. And they were just phenomenal. It was, I couldn't, there was no negativity at all towards the whole process. And I think I've told you this before, Brian, we, uh, for me, that was the Super Bowl. I would have gladly lost on purpose uh, because I think we all won. I think for me personally, uh, it's like we were a football team and we went through something that I think we'll never forget. And I think we'll always be uh, connected with this, with this video because of that day. And for me and what it represents to the blind community, what it represents for us uh, to play a sport we love, we were all champions that day. We were all Super Bowl champs in my eyes. It, it was fabulous, fabulous. Yeah. Now, I didn't realize how much I was going to enjoy having makeup on. And the funniest thing was we wrapped this all in one day and then we went out to have a wrap party and we had 10 blind, visually impaired people walk into a sports bar with makeup on. So what was that like? Did you, did you feel people looking at you kind of funny? I'm not sure, Brian, but uh, I try to kind of keep inconspicuous and just drink my beer on the side. So uh, I don't know if we got some dirty looks. I had no clue. But, uh, but uh, people said I look good. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy with so okay, so you're, you're in that. Yeah, th this project, you know, we hope it lives on and it shows – other companies and developers because a lot of developers work behind the scenes and they never get feedback from their customers with disabilities. So this was a great way for the developers that work on the Yahoo fantasy app to get to see in real time, how people take advantage of these accessibility features that aren't always the easiest thing to build into the app, but are very necessary. So we accomplished a couple things here with the all blind fantasy football league documentary and uh, we're hopeful that this helps other companies show, you know, listen to your customers with disabilities, keep an open dialogue, because it's all about communication. Like I said, this all started with an email about eight years ago, a bunch of emails going back and forth with employees that aren't even with the company anymore. We've reached out to a few of them that some of those emails hit. And they're absolutely floored that we've reached a stage where the app is fully accessible. They're not floored about that part. But the fact that we're making a mini documentary about how people use all those features and everything. And uh, Nick, uh, moving forward, you think you'll be playing fantasy football for the rest of your life? Absolutely. Uh, there, it's something that's been innate with me since I was a child. It's, you know, uh, not being able to play the sports, like I said earlier, this, this kind of uh, engages me back into it to all the sports that I, I used to, well, I still love, and I always did, but there was a detach, and this brings me closer, and uh, we all need distractions, you know, with life, pandemic, and sports for me is what I need sometimes to just, just tune out from the day-to-day -day problems and just focus on my fantasy team just for 30 minutes, 
a day or depending on how much time you want to spend that sometimes I spend a little too much time on it but nonetheless it's a detach for me and and life's sometimes difficult and uh, for me it's an escape and it's an escape that I love and I'll always use uh, for the rest of my life because I love sports and I love the distraction from sometimes uh, problems yeah and I've always said you know fantasy is 60 percent skill 40 percent luck but when Nick beats me, it's probably 80% luck. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, uh, Brian's been a competitor. We've been playing this sport for the last, you know, we've been playing in the same league for six years and he's been in the championship game six times. So he's, he's always there. Uh, so he's great. We, we kind of uh, push ourselves. I've won it four. Brian's won it twice. And we push ourselves because, you know, uh, there's a there's a, there's a, a slight competitiveness amongst us us two, uh, and I think it's good and it keeps us on our toes and we have a lot of fun. And uh, the scary part, Brian, is that the rest of the league is catching up real quick. And uh, people that were casual fans now are addicted to fantasy sports and can't wait till next year. So we we got to keep ourselves on our toes, Brian, because we got some competition next year and uh, everyone loves it. And that's what the fun part is. Everyone loves it. Yeah. A lot of you out there might say, well, I'm never going to play fantasy. And we had somebody in the league this year that said that. And within the first week, he's texting me in the middle of a work day saying I'm picking up players while I'm at the office, mostly getting work done and everything. So <laughs> you might say that it's not something you're into, but until you try it, you're really missing out. And you could work in an office with uh, sighted people and you guys could create a league together because as we've shown, the app is fully accessible and we do plan moving forward to launch a second all blind fantasy football league. And who knows, we've had a lot of interest. So there could even be a third. Uh, you can email us in if you're interested in getting involved uh, that real blind tech show at gmail.com or tweet us in at blind tech show and let us know you're interested in checking out Yahoo fantasy. Cause we really want to get as many people out there that are interested in joining the app and learning uh, what it's all about. And I guess, Emily, uh, we got to get you back in on here. Yeah, we've got some great questions that have come across for you guys. So um, I'm going to jump right in so we can address them all. So first, um, in the realm of sports, do you feel that Yahoo's accomplishments will influence other app makers such as, you know, betting apps or ticket purchasing apps and things along those lines? Uh, let me, I, I, I hope so. Um, I'm in touch with some other companies and we're in different stages of communication. But if you're looking into getting into betting or daily fantasy, reach out to them. All these companies, tweet them, find an email. They all have um contact us somewhere in the app the more of us that reach out as nick mentioned earlier numbers the more of us that reach out to these companies if they're not going to be make their it accessible because it's the right thing to do hopefully we can force them to make their app accessible and one thing if you have leagues that other like your friends are playing that are on different platforms tell them you know yahoo is available it's, it's just as good as any other any other app if not better and it's accessible to you and like Brian said, too, we, we need it to strengthen numbers. If, you know, if there is a platform that you prefer or want to get accessibility, again, we need as an organization, as a group of blind people to, uh, to knock some doors. And, and like, I hope this is what I hope this video would have done. It would have opened eyes to, to the companies and say, well, look what Yahoo is doing. Maybe we should be doing it. So this is what, uh, as, an, as a bunch of blind people and Yahoo, uh, this is what we want. We want accessibility across the board. Yeah, and this is Joe. I'll jump in as well. And I think uh, just echoing what, what both of you said, I think we do need to hear from you. I think it does. We have very strong advocates within the company, which has helped us get to where we are today. But I think all companies should want to hear if something is not working. So like Brian said, reach out to people, tweet, send emails. And, and the more people, the more attention it's going to get. So I used this phrase earlier when we were talking. I think being politely persistent, um, you know, and eventually you can escalate if you need to, but I think that's the way grab people's attention, tug at heartstrings. And while we are a leader in this space, I would love to see everyone else catch up to us. I think it's a good thing. Yeah, that's excellent. And Joe, since you were just talking, we have a great question for you. So as a product manager, how have you injected accessibility at each stage? So design, development, 
of your team's development process. Yeah, again, I think it's lucky we have this, um, this group effort at Yahoo. So our design team, there are standards that they have in place um, that they work with our accessibility team. And there's documentation for saying how to set up your pages so that they're able to be accessible to folks. So it starts at you know, collaboration amongst team. And then our engineers, again, they really care. Some of the things Brian and, you know, the video does, but where we you know, would like to get to the office and go back into the lab is seeing people using our products firsthand is the biggest um, spotlight you can put on something. So we do care at Yahoo um, at, across different levels. As a product manager, I'm bringing those teams together. So it is, you know, kind of passing through different phases, but we have a strong structure in place to catch these things early and make sure they're done. And then before we launch products, we do have a quality engineering team and we do testing our own. So product managers and engineers and designers are all looking at releases before they go out and making sure things are working the way that we expect them. Having said all that, there are things that happen to get through. So we do want to hear from you when there are things that are not working um, well for you and we'll do our best to fix those. Yeah, I think that culture of accessibility is super important. It sounds like you guys have that at Yahoo, at least, which is excellent. So very strong. Yeah. yeah. Is there any particular area of the app that was changed to be more accessible, like the standings, live drafting, stats, et cetera, that you're most proud of? I think, well, it starts with the draft. I think the draft is the most important part of your season. If we screw up your draft, you're not going to have a good year. You're going to be upset. So I think making that, and that's where we kind of started is, you know, we, you know, it's good to hear that big noggin story and, you know, apps getting acquired by Yahoo since that's how I got there. But um, yeah, I think making the draft accessible for everybody is a great way to start. Um, and as we've gone on, we've heard different things at different times. So making sure the standings are, you know, reading correctly or the matchup recaps, I think were a few that we, we tried to fix quickly this year based on feedback from the, from the fantasy league. And this happens as we sh kind of are shifting technologies behind the scenes and some things. So we just got to make sure we're, you know, we're really strongly testing this stuff because we want to move fast, but we want to be careful with some of the stuff. So I'd say probably the draft since it's the most fun and exciting and, important time of the year to make sure that's accessible for people. Brian, I think the waiver wire and Brian was a focal point of the waiver wire. Uh, there's been, you know, being part of the group, we, we, we found certain things and I think the waiver wire was one. And I remember the video making the video work for me. I always like, you know, getting as much information as I can and that was fixed. And then there was the stars. I remember there was, my sighted girlfriend had told me, Nick, there's little stars on, on each player. What does that mean? And I'm like, oh, I don't hear it on my voiceover. And eventually they got that fixed. And that, you know, helps us as a, a person who's a novice who might say, well, this player has four stars. So he's a good play to put into the lineup for a two star and a one star. So it was a great process to go through. And uh, Brian could talk about the waiver wire one if he wants and how he found out and I guess being part of that process and helping out was so phenomenal that we got everything to work uh, pretty well. That one was a few years ago. And, and just yeah. because they work at Yahoo Fantasy doesn't necessarily mean they're a big football or fantasy fan themselves. And Joe, they had removed the numbering. So if you wanted to add, uh, you'd have to go back and delete all the uh, waiver wire claims he had put in and start over and everything instead yeah. of just easily being able to number them, you know, one to five in your order of preference and everything. Yep. So getting that fixed was a great deal and everything. And just having this open dialogue with the team there, it, it just makes everything so tremendous because, you know, the draft, I, I know Joe mentioned that. I mean, you have these auction drafts that have so many moving parts and the fact that it's fully access accessible is truly amazing and it just shows the commitment of the, the team at Yahoo Fantasy. I can't speak well enough about them. Yeah, That's I think excellent. the drafts are hard enough when you have full vision. So, I mean, we want to make sure for people that are up against the clock that they're able to find what they're looking for. And, and to touch on a couple of things, too, like there are shared, you know, things at Yahoo, the video player and, and certain things. So we also, you know, we want to work with other teams as we're integrating stuff with into our product. We want to make sure we're fully testing that. And it, you know, there are definitely instances where we miss things. So again, just let us know and we'll do our best to fix. Yeah. I think that's one of the things I love most about this story and, and this whole presentation is, you know, it's not just about making it, you know, WCAG compliant or something. It's about making it really easily, easy to use for everyone, right. And easily usable. So, and using the focus groups to help with that. So that's excellent. So 
Um, another question, any sleepers for fantasy baseball this year? <laughs> do any, do fantasy sports have bigger hurdles towards accessibility than others? Uh, I, well, I know I, I, Nick's not a fantasy baseball guy. I am. I have finally been finishing my prep work. I don't, don't know about sleepers. Um, you know, it depends what format you plan. I mean, that's, that's the other great thing about Yahoo fantasy. They have so many different formats and everything that they have something for everybody. And uh, I know I could now say stay away from Fernando Tatis because he's going to be out three months and you never want to yeah. start with injured players. But look for guys that are going to steal you 20 or so bases because that's an art that's uh, really gone away. And you'll do yourself a favor getting some guys that are going to steal at least 20 bags and everything. Awesome. Yeah, we're, we're, kind of, we're just happy that the MLB and the players figured it out yeah. so we get to have our fantasy baseball season. So thank, thanks for the question. And uh, <laughs> yeah, thanks for playing. I think, Brian, there's one other funny at, at a big company event one time. I'll, I'll remember this. The, the CEO at the time um, asked uh, like a, a sports engineer, like, who should I take with the first pick? And is the engineer's answer was similar to what you said. He just goes depends on your league settings yeah. so it's like you know it depends on how your scoring works you may want you know players are worth different values but you're right we can you, know, you can and change the game however you want to work for you and there there was a tv show several years ago called the league which was all about fantasy football and i remember the pilot episode it was two lawyers and it was uh you know they were trying to make a deal for a client that had committed some crime and the lawyer goes out and he talks and he's like, you, I'm going to let your client off, but you need to give me the number one pick in our fantasy football draft. <laughs> and he walks back into the client and says, so what, what are they going to give me 10 years? He goes, you're getting away scot-free, but I just lost Adrian Peterson. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fantasy has become pop culture almost. I mean, it's, if you go to any bar or restaurant, you're sitting there and it's amazing how many times, I've been just flipping around my phone. I've got the screen curtain on. A lot of this was obviously pre-COVID. And so many people are like, well, what, what are you doing? You can't even see the screen. And it's like, oh, I'm setting my fantasy football lineup for tomorrow. And they're like, how? And it just, it opens a dialogue between you and other people. And the more people, you know, your common strangers that we could just educate about accessibility, it's just going to make it better for people with any kind of disabilities down the road. Yeah, and getting to know the people that we, you know, uh, that we've been playing this game for 10 years and, you know, meeting them and le learning about their stories. And there's no other place like a group of fantasy group of fantasy football players or any, you know, any other sport, but the, the smack talk, the talk about, go on the message board to connect. I think that's also a big factor in fantasy and uh, how it just unites us a little bit more sometimes. Yeah, we're all talking about trying to get together uh, this upcoming season somewhere to possibly do the draft in person again. So it's created a lot of friendships between people in the league as well, which is really cool. Excellent. So we've talked a lot about football and a little bit about baseball. So does this particular fantasy sports encompass all different sports? Somebody's asking about um, hockey because they would love to beat Brian and Nick in fantasy hockey. Uh, <laughs> we do have an... Yeah, we have. Go ahead, Brian. Go ahead. <laughs> we do have a all blind fantasy hockey league that um, unfortunately I got a little busy with life. So I Nick is still in it um, with their, yeah. you, they have basketball. I don't do basketball. So if somebody wants to start one, but uh, Nick, you could talk more about the fantasy hockey league. Yeah. The fantasy hockey league is great and we're doing, I'm doing pretty well third place and we have a few players from the uh, all blind football league that's in it uh, frank's in first place one of uh and uh, dave as well as playing and we got some other uh people uh, one of uh i think scott uh, but brian had him on his podcast another great guy and uh, there's been uh, kate and a couple of women too you know everybody everybody's welcome and we love it uh Again, like any other fantasy, it depends on, you know, the, uh, the, the parameters and how the scoring system goes. But we, we worked it out and uh, we're enjoying it as well. And uh, we're going to the home stretch. So, yeah, of course, maybe we can open up a second hockey league or if something opens up in our league, we can uh, surely contact Brian and uh, Brian will uh, set you up. And one yeah. thing we should Ooh. say, uh, one thing I should add, this, this is all free, by the way, that yeah, there's yeah. no cost to play. Now, Yahoo does offer everything from the free all up into the pro paid leagues, which I play in 
paid and free. But that's the great thing about all this. It just takes your time. Obviously, everybody's time is valuable, but Yahoo does, you know, it's completely free for you to get started and everything. And uh, I suggest everybody try it. It's not for everybody, but you, you might surprise yourself and find a new hobby. Awesome. I have two, we're basically out of time, but I get, want to get two quick questions in. Um, one, I think everybody's wondering after the documentary, did Janine beat at least one person this year in football? <laughs> she did very well. She almost made oh, the playoffs. Okay. She lost out on making the playoffs in the final week of the regular season. No, oh, good didn't for her. did she win like seven games, Brian? Six she or seven, like yeah. Seven, seven yeah. Seven, yeah. Awesome. And my other question is NCAA March Madness tournament is coming up. Anybody have any, any picks for that? I know absolutely no. zero about college <laughs> basketball. So I don't, I don't know. Duke. I, I don't know. I know they've been losing lately. <laughs> <laughs> I still need yeah. to do my homework. I'm not a big uh, NCAA guy, but I always kind of uh, dabble into it. I love sports altogether. So, but I, I don't have big, I need to look through the bracket, but Joe, maybe, you know, more. <laughs> Joe, I, more. I know. Yeah. I know very little as well. Um, it's just, I know it's fun to play brackets lock on Thursday morning when the first game tips. So hopefully everyone will check it out. Um, we did some work on the accessibility side on the web for that game based on feedback last year. So it should be fully accessible on the web and it's available in our apps as well. So hopefully everybody has fun. Um, no predictions on my end. I'll probably fill out my bracket tomorrow night and, and yeah, go I by. I think Villanova's good too. Names. So maybe them. Yeah. There you go. From Georgetown, maybe Georgetown. No. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, that we are at time. I just want to thank Joe and Brian and Nick for this chat. It's been amazing. Um, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day at AxCon. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.